So let's talk about the drivetrain, but also the wheels. And there's a real interaction between, uh, well, there's a lot of codependencies between those two, two things, which kind of gets in the way of your plans. My original plan was to transfer the SLX drivetrain recently installed on my Pinnacle bike over to this. Be a great match for this bike. Fantastic spread of gears, nice system, almost brand new. And indeed I could do that, but there's a couple of things that get in the way of that. There's a problem with 1x12 systems, well, not intrinsically, but um, to get the spread of gears, what both Shimano, who make the SLX system, and SRAM, who do their own um, 1x12 systems, they've chosen to go to a 10 tooth smallest sprocket. That gives you more headroom on the, on the high gears. Now the problem with that is it breaks what's become a de facto standard for wheel hubs, which is this splined, or well, Shimano call it HG Hyperglide, but it's the it's the same system that SRAM uses on its um, a, a wide range of its gear systems. And the problem with that is um, to get a ten tooth sprocket, it won't fit. It physically can't be made small enough to fit onto that splined hub. The answer to that. You know, there's, there's two ways to go with that. One is um, you do you make gear systems without a t ten tooth sprocket, or you make a you redesign the hub system. Now, both of those options are out there. So coming back to the plots, Shimano has solved that ten tooth sprocket problem by redesigning the hub. They've they've created a system called Micro Spline, which is presumably a smaller diameter hub system, um, and that's what the SLX system uses. Why am I telling you this? Well, because in order to transfer that system onto this bike I need to get wheels that have microspine hubs. Now the problem with that is those are in very short supply. You know, not many people, because it's a new system, not many people have built their wheels with microspine hubs. You know, the only hubs that I found, the, the only wheels, pre-built wheels, this is that I could find um, with the specs I wanted, which are, you know, mountain bike wheels. I wanted a wider rim, not a, not a plus size rim, but a you know, 28, 29, 30mm rim. Um, the wheels I found were the only f wheels I could find in stock. That's another thing. A lot of these you know, supply chain problems are extending to co supply of components as well. But there were the DT Swiss uh, M1900 wheels, which are great wheels. They come with microspline hubs. So those wheels were an option and they were, you know, uh, within the grand scheme of things, they weren't super expensive. So I was going to go for that. And then I realised that the SLX system I've got on there, the crankshaft is unsuitable because it's designed for non-boost frames. And there is actually an alternative crank. There is a boost-based um, crank, which, which I think basically just offsets the crank by another three millimetres, which I'd have to buy and that's an extra hundred pounds, let's call it. So I had to think twice about that. Um, that's what I was going to do. So the other option is to look at alternatives. Just coming back, you know, onto the sidetrack about the different, you know, we, we've got three different hub standards which are vying for competition here. I said SRAM had its own solution to that 10 tooth sprocket problem and their solution is they, they created another hub standard called XD. Now XD is a, I don't know the technicalities, I did read about this but I've forgotten now. I think you can, on some hubs you can, you can take out the hub body and there's some sort of screw-in way of fixing the cassette on rather than a splined hub. Interestingly enough Shimano's 11, 1x11 SLX system uses XD hubs. So I was, you know, thinking well maybe I could source a 1x11 SLX that would allow me to buy XD hubs which are more widely available than microspline hubs. And then the third option which is much more conservative I looked at SRAM's 1x12 Eagle systems. Now on the Eagle system, certainly on the NX Eagle and I think the GX Eagle um, they've taken a much more conservative approach which is it's got a 1x12 gear range but the smallest cog is, is 11 speed and the beauty of that or the advantage of that is it's compatible with the spline tubs. So I thought well look I could buy an NX Eagle group set 
uh, that would open up you know the choice of wheels to be much wider so that's what I've done in a nutshell I've bought the NX um, Eagle 1x12 group set um, and it's still got a very wide range we've got a 32 on the front 11 to 50 on the back now 32 to 11 is not going to give me a super high gear ratios just about three to one but we're going to have super low uh, bailout gear at the bottom with that 50 tooth and a 32 on the front so pretty good compromise um, and doing the maths you know the reason I went for that at the end of the day was the wheels I've chosen because they're not micro spline wheels they were cheaper than the DT Swiss ones um, that some way went to offsetting the cost of buying this this was these go for about 250 to 280 pounds now that's 100, 100 150 below what they retail for when they came out at the end of the day I'm paying about 50 pounds more to go to this system and now of course this dictates the bottom bracket um, we know the size of the bottom bracket but the internal dimensions depend on what crank you're going to fit this uses SRAM's DUB, D-U-B, I don't know what that stands for bottom bracket system so I've made sure those new proof bearings are the right size I've double checked by taking the crank out here and uh, I've actually threaded the bearings onto the crank <laughs> to make sure they fit because I don't want these whacking to my carbon, like very expensive carbon frame, and then find that they're the wrong size. Um, what to say about this? Yeah, this is a budget 1x12 system, so they reckon it's relatively heavy. And, and what I did notice was the cassette, I won't get the cassette out, it's right in the bottom of this tower, but um, it's all, all the cogs are steel, which surprised me slightly. Um, there's SLX, most of the cogs are alloy, I think the outer, the 51 tooth is steel. The other thing that surprised me about this is, this is the non-drive side crank. And, and that means that the crank is secured on the drive side, which, I don't know, is that unusual? It's different to, to Shimano. And of course that you know, fifty pound extra. I get to keep the one by twelve on the on the pinnacle as well, which is great. If you're going to buy one of these again, there's a boost and there's a non-boost version. Um, I had to make sure I bought the boost version so the crank is uh, offset appropriately. So the other part of the drivetrain is the wheels. So the wheels I've chosen are Octane One Solar Trail wheels, and I have them here. And they're boost spaced wheels with conventional hubs. That's the plan. I haven't even taken them out of the box yet, so let's have a look at them. Okay, so here's all of the wheels. Which one is this? This is pretty light actually. Oh, they're kind of flashy. You know, those graphics are <laughs> kind of in your face. Um, they'll soon dirty up. They're just stickers actually. You know, they could come off. But um, this is the rear, pretty sure. It's a wheel. So not much more to say about these conventional hubs. Uh, 29 inch uh, yeah, millimeter, 29 millimeter rims I think or 28 uh, I'm not going to use them with tubeless tyres but we're going to run them with wider tyres I was going to go for 2.3 inch tyres but um, and, and we're going for the high roller twos I've gone for 2.4 inch uh, simply because for some reason somebody had stock of the 2.4s at literally half the price of the 2.3 so I saved you know, 40 quid and you know, they're like 100 grams heavier than the 2.3s or something. They should fit easily on here. We can go up to 2.6 on here. Um, six hole rotor space, uh, rotor mount system. The brake discs. I think the first thing we'll do is get those built up 
Can't put them on the bike till we've got the bottom bracket on. So my local bike shop's gonna do the bottom bracket and the headset, uh, hopefully in a couple of days time. It's a simple job for somebody who knows what they're doing. So the only major thing left really to talk about is the brakes. So we're gonna use the SLX brakes, as I say, from there. Brand new brakes, been around the block a couple of times. Um, talked about the cable routing. We're going to have a 180 rotor on the back, we're going to have a 180 rotor on the front. One of the things I like about the SLX brakes, you can get, um, they're compatible with this system called Ice Tech. So we're going to have an Ice Tech rotor on the back. Now that's about cooling, dis dissipating the heat better. Um, on my Pinnacle, the, uh, it's got great Sh Shimano Dior 615 brakes on there. The only issue with those is I have had those. Um, well, not fade under heavy braking, but you know, going down a long hill, and um, they've definitely overheated. And what tends to happen is the back brake uh, has overheated, and it just sort of freezes or seizes. Uh, it hasn't seized in the clock in a sort of applied position. It's just um, I suspect what's happened is it's got so hot that the pistons got stuck, and so the lever is just completely solid. Uh, you know, that's me dragging the back brake. I mean, I'm not professional by any means. I probably overuse the back brake, in particular. So what the Ice Tech system does? Uh, it's a two-part system. You you get a different rotor, which is a laminated rotor. So it's got a it's stainless steel with a alloy core, which dissipates the heat more effectively to the as a big chunky um, alloy carrier in the middle, which is black. I don't know if that's black to um, make it a better radiator. But, um, so that's one part of the system. You can also put these um, the brake ice tech brake pads on, which the pads are basically twice as big. They've got a huge alloy heat sink sticks out of the top with fins on. So again, another way of dissipating heat. So, to cut a long story short, we've got an ice tech 180 rotor for the back. I haven't done that for the front. I tend not to probably over overdo the front braking. Um, I mean, this is you know this is probably bad riding technique coming from motorbikes. I know we should be doing most of the braking with the front brake. So at the moment we don't have an ice tech rotor on the front. We can retrofit that later. They're, they're like you know twice the price, or maybe well they're more expensive than the non ice tech. But they just you know you can swap them out. And so I've got ice tech rotor on the back and pads as well. 